Hey guys, I am Shaft of the Clan and Casting Crew. Welcome to the first cast of the new year. This is going to be an excellent game, very fast paced, really showcasing that part of the legacy of the Void style. It's a game between a not so well known player who is really known for his bio style and, um, you know, a varying, a varying degree of versatility in his matchups he can be all in he can uh turtle he can do all kinds of things and then a another player who is known a little bit more for his attitude his bad manners not necessarily his extremely high apm which you know opposed to the terran who has an amazing 600 700 apm almost all game long is pretty profound. We'll see what the mechanical differences between these players will end up showcasing in this matchup that, you know, possibly could be a little bit more strategic. Without further ado, we're going to hop into that game, because here on the bottom left-hand side of Dusk Towers, we have in the Red Zone Trunks, representing Team Exile 5 is none other than Kawaiian. And in the top right-hand side of that very same map, going for a three-hatch before pull against the Reaper opening of his opponent. In the Blue Zerg Trunks, representing Team Destiny, it's Destiny! Alright, so we've got a pretty unorthodox game opening already. Typically, three hatch before pull is reserved for a Zerg vs. Protoss matchup. It shows a excessive degree of confidence that Destiny might choose to use this build in this matchup. And then, especially on this map, because this map in particular, while, you know, it does have a sequestered three bases tucked into uh, this one ramp. This ramp is huge. It is very easy to get past early on, and without very, very strong creep spread, a Zerg has a lot of trouble containing this ramp. And actually, you may not see it in this little bit of harassment we're about to see here. However, uh, this Reaper, you know, gonna be coming in very quickly and not utilizing that ramp, but definitely getting into this mineral line without contest. And, you know, the Queens are in production, a couple of links coming out to deal with the situation, but a lot of poking being done here by the Reaper. Now, we do have a unorthodox follow-up coming up by Kawaiian, who has chosen instead of a factory in the Starport build, which is what you would typically see in this Terran vs. Zerg matchup, he has chosen to go for the second and third of Barracks, bringing himself, um to a pretty strong either Reaper or Marine production. We'll see, oh, he's actually following this up with a factory. He may choose to get some, uh, you know, maybe Hellbats in there. I'm not really sure. That also could be a drop play. Uh, this map, very notorious for drops because of the space behind these naturals, connecting even here to this third, uh, and, you know, a little poke up here, this wide ramp, also very beneficial, but, Creep spread could be coming out very, very quickly. There's enough queens on the map that if he just really focuses on creep spread, he should be able to secure a pretty solid defense. Creep actually huge defensive advantage for Zerg players as with the increased movement speed, it allows their units, especially Lings and Banelings, to connect a lot easier with much, much better surrounds. As Lings, they want to move behind the opponent's army, grab them, and hold them there. In fact, Destiny himself calls this the Baneling Rape analogy, as the Lings are really the hands of the Rapist holding the opponent there. The Banelings are what do most of the work. His analogy, not mine, guys. Please, please, don't flame. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's the state of mind that Destiny works from, is the fact that this creep is going to allow him a defensive advantage. Now, should we see drops, and in fact, I have a strong feeling we will, as this starport is moving over here to the reactor. If we do see some drops coming in, this creep thread actually won't be of any benefit. So it's kind of a blind counter by Kawhi Ian, who does not know that the creep thread is so out of control, but will still be avoiding it by default, nonetheless. Were this some kind of Hellbat or Hellion thing, this would be so easy for the Zerg to defend just due to that incredible creep spread. And of course, Kawhi Ian is going to have to do some form of damage to get back into this game. As you can see, Destiny clearly already 13 workers ahead, an entire base ahead as the command center 
is, the third command center rather is just a third of the way done, he will have a significant gas and mineral advantage going into the mid game that Kawhi Ian will want to negate as much as possible. Now we do have the Lyric finishing up here. Perhaps we'll see, uh, well there's two evolution chambers. There's not that good a chance we'll see Mutalus. We'll see what he's going to follow this up with. It may even be some kind of Roach Hydra comp, but anyways, with this amount of gas, no, it's got to be uh, Mutalus. So there's the Spire actually. Boom! I predicted it. Called it. Of course, I would have been right either way. Anyways, a little bit of uh, pressure here with this Marine. Yeah, I guess he's trying to distract the Zerg. The Zerg did see this drop in, uh, coming across the creek. And two dropships actually full of Marines could pose a potential hazard here for Destiny as this second and third base are incredibly easy to bounce between. You see the narrow passage right there in between it. All the Terran has to do is pick up, run over, as you're seeing right here, and the Zerg, of course, will have to go this vast, long distance just to get into a position to defend. Static defense, definitely something you're going to want to defend your position on a map like this. But Destiny got a little bit caught uh, too soon. It's not that often that you see someone going for a second and third rack. He was playing the meta, not his opponent. His opponent taking advantage of that. We also see a little bit of a drop up here in the top left base, really stretching that Zerg quite thin. And Kawaiian, you know, just powering up back at home, working on his, what is it, five barracks now? Everything getting a reactor or tech lab. He's got the command center up as well to support such a vast production structure. And actually, Destiny looking to be in a little bit of a rough spot. He's actually still ahead on Zer uh, drones, though. He's lost 19, but still ahead on the drone count. That is the power of a three hatch build. However, Destiny's Creek starting to get cleared up here a little bit by Kawhi Ian, and as such, that's gonna be a little bit of the defensive power of Destiny as well. And some great scans going down here, just cleaning this creep up, but being a little bit too pushy, pushing onto that creep before it has the opportunity to receive. However, these Banes could get some great connections here on the creep. We've got a little bit of a pre-split by Kawhi Ian who Oh, it looks like, oh my god, he actually took those Baneling hits to the face, but there were not enough Banelings to clear up the uh, the Marine count here. Mutalisks trying to do a little bit of it, but a lot of Mutalisks getting lost in this battle. It looks like he will manage to clean this up by pulling his drones off the line and uh, taking a lot of drone losses, actually. 36 drone losses now, but the Mutalisks do survive. If he can manage to get these Mutalisks uh, to clean up some of these medevacs and maybe uh, even get a little bit of harassment down at uh, the third or natural of the Terran, he may be able to get himself back into this game. However, the creep is receding, as you see. Uh, most of the creep tumors have been cleaned out, so that ground advantage he did have is significantly nullified. There are no upgrades against the Terrans of 1-1. One, one. Typically, the Zerg gets to 2-2 two, two before the Terran gets to 2-2, two, two, but the Terran is usually able to get 3-3 three, three a lot faster. This is totally flipped on its head in this game, and Destiny feeling its effects. That creep spread just not enough to uh, to hold this defense, I don't think. Look at this, the Ling's getting cleaned up here by some of the Hellions, but the Mulisks are still alive. That is a huge advantage for Destiny. As long as he does not lose a significant portion of these Mutalisks, he will be okay. However, he has lost five Mutalisks, that is 500 gas, that he will not be able to get back. And it looks like this attack is, oh, Destiny actually gonna be forced to quit out of the game. Not even a GG, but hey, it's Destiny. What have you learned to expect? Kawaiian taking an easy victory, or at least he made it look easy. I don't know if it was that, you know, it was just random luck in that blind counter, or if uh, he maybe knows the destiny he plays a little bit more aggressive, and I don't know, it, it, a very interesting situation either way, and the creep wasn't able to do its damage. He was not able to get those banelings in there to penetrate the, the marine lines like he needed. If he had some lings instead of just pure baneling, maybe he could have grabbed them with the lings and held them still like, you know, he teaches us in that video. But just didn't happen, guys. Just didn't happen. And a very good game to X Kawaiian of Team Exile 5, who, you know, I'm going to give a shout out to on uh, Twitter when I post this. Hopefully, you know, he'll uh, share this video, check it out. If so, man, thank you so much for watching, as well as you, the viewer, uh, you know, whoever you are.
Thank you so much for watching. Each and every view on this channel counts, guys. We have just broke 104,000 views on the channel. I'm so excited. I actually never thought we'd get there. We're closing in on the 500 subscriber mark, guys. So if we reach the 500 subscriber mark, remember a few months back I told you if when we reach that, I'll be giving away some free accounts to se2replaystats.com. So if you're interested in that, go back and watch that video. I'll uh, leave a link here in the annotations. But watch that video and get enrolled in that. Also, if you haven't seen the update for the channel for the new year, please go watch that. It explains the huge delay, the fact that I broke my ankle. I am totally, you know, stuck at home, unable to do much. So guess what? Now that I'm able to, you know, lucidly access a computer and not be oh, no, 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 I'm back. And we've got tons of new content coming for you guys. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, guys. I am Shaft of the Cleaning Casting Crew, and I'm heading out. Peace.